Let's get an update on what's going on in Washington with Colin Woodall, Vice President of Governmental Affairs for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Colin, we've been doing these now for several years. Always good to get the update. Uh, sometimes you bring us good news, sometimes you bring us the challenges. Uh, here we are just a few weeks left of the congressional session. One thing that it seems like has become uh, an annual event is working on uh, tax extenders, a tax extender package, very important for agriculture. Uh, where do we sit with that? Now, unfortunately, we're in a bit of a holding pattern right now. We are waiting for everything to materialize on this last minute package, and it will be a last minute package, but it holds so many important provisions, especially for those of us in agriculture. Section 179 expensing, for example, which would allow you to expense up to $500,000 on purchases up to $2 million. Without this program, that expense amount is only 25 5,000. So that's a pretty big discrepancy between 25,000 and half a million, especially when you look at your bottom line tax liability. So that's why it's important for us to get this done. But unfortunately, for several years now, we've had to do this one year at a time. The package that we're looking at right now would make this program retroactive for all of 2015. So any purchases that have already been made would be covered, but it will also extend it into 2016. It's the first time we've had an extension into the future. So we are looking forward to get this done. But as I said, it's probably going to be one of the last things that they do before they leave for Christmas. There's been so many things in the news and, and, and we seem to go down one path but then we come and here's the next shiny thing that we have to look at. One of the things that's kind of been lost in all this but another issue very important is the nutrition guidelines. It wasn't that many months ago that a lot of people were up in arms about uh, delving into things that had nothing to do with nutrition uh, but that's now kind of coming to some finality. Uh, what's the update there? Now, the update there is very positive. Uh, as you mentioned, we were one of the groups that was not very happy with where this started because the Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee had really focused a lot on environment and sustainability, and their job was to look at nutritional value, and those are two very separate and distinct issues. But fortunately, we were able to generate enough concern that Chairman Conaway of the House Agriculture Committee held a hearing back in October with Secretary Vilsack and Secretary Burwell, and both the secretaries came out and announced that environment sustainability sustainability would not be a part of these final guidelines. So that's a very positive step for us. We do expect the final guidelines to come out about the middle of December, and we do expect that lean beef will be a part of the overall statement about a healthy dietary pattern for Americans. So uh, we are optimistic. A couple of other issues uh, uh, I, you know, we've talked about with a lot of uh, grain commodities. Let's talk about uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, waiting for that final kind of push through. A the impact it's going to have on the beef industry, uh, uh, B, when's it going to pass? Or when's it at least going to be voted on? Right. Extremely important for us, especially when we look at Japan. In 2014, Japan was the number one export market for U.S. beef. We had a value of about $1.6 billion worth of our product that went into Japan. But Australia signed a trade agreement with Japan, and now they have a tariff advantage. So in 2015, we have seen erosion of that trade access that we had. That's one of the reasons why TPP is so important, because it will bring us back on a level playing field with Australia, and it takes our current tariff of 38.5% down to 9%. That means much more of our money is going to stay in our pockets rather than in the coffers of the Japanese government. So that's why we're pushing this. As far as timing, we are pushing for Congress to get get this done in the first quarter of 2016. As I said, as we continue to see erosion of our access to Australia and Japan, every day is critical. That's why we need this as quickly as possible. And we need to make sure that it gets done before it gets too bogged down into the presidential election politics. You brought up tariffs. Let's talk about the other thing that's going to be happening pretty quick. World Trade Organization getting this thing kind of finalized on what might possibly happen uh, with retaliatory tariffs could have a big impact on U.S. beef between Canada and Mexico and the U.S. Right. This, of course, is in regards to country of origin labeling. Cool. We expect the WTO to come out on December the 7th and announce the monetary levels, the dollar figures, that Canada and Mexico will be able to use to retaliate against the United States. This is no longer about retaliation. It's just how much they can retaliate against us. Canada and Mexico combined want to be able to retaliate at about $3 billion. That is significant, not only on its impact to the cattle industry, Industry, but all of the other commodities that they will hit. We have to repeal this in order to prevent retaliation, and so that's our focus right now is working with the Senate. The House has already acted to repeal. We need the Senate to get this done before retaliation takes place because if retaliation happens before congressional action, then we're probably going to see about two years' worth of retaliation, and we as the U.S. cattle industry cannot afford that. A couple of the quick hits. One, uh, since last time we talked, been an election in Canada. 
change in prime minister, does that change anything as far as you can tell but possible between the relationship between uh, U.S. and Canada, especially when it comes to the cattle industry? So we've already had conversations with the new Canadian government, and they've made it very clear that they are as strong, if not stronger, on retaliating on cool as the previous government was. So we're, we have seen no change in their position, and they have told us that on the first day that they're able to execute retaliation, they will do so. Paul Ryan from Wisconsin is the new speaker. What does that mean as far as moving legislation and the impact it could have on agriculture? Yeah, we're excited about Speaker Ryan. Uh, we've had a great relationship with him as a House member and also as the former chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. You know, he's positive on trade issues. He's positive on tax issues. And I do believe that he is going to bring a lot of leadership to the House and have them tackle even more issues than they already have. You know, he's, he's got an interesting position right now because he is trying to bring all the Republicans together to continue acting. But it's also about how he deals with the Senate because under Speaker Boehner's leadership, the House passed a lot of bills that were good for all of agriculture, but especially the cattle business, and they all went over on the Senate side and have just been languishing. I think uh, we're going to really try to test um, the congressman or the new speaker's leadership to see if he can actually get the Senate to follow on action and make sure that we get some of these things finally passed and signed by the president. Well, good to see you. I know you've got a lot of work to do from at least now to the end of this year and then early on. Uh, uh, what's your timetable, you think? When are we going to stop getting some progress made and focus simply on the presidential? Can we make it through that first quarter of the year, you think? I think we can. Uh, outside of that, I don't believe Congress is going to be able to get anything done. Everybody's just focused not only on the presidential election, but of course on their own elections. You know, we're going to reelect all 435 members of the House, but the Senate is also in an interesting scenario where the Democrats are focused on taking control back from the Republicans. And when you look at a lot of the races that are out there, that is definitely a viable scenario. So I do believe that that's almost as important as what we're seeing with the White House race right now. All right, Colin, good to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Colin Woodall, who is Vice President of Governmental Affairs for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, has joined us. That's the Ag View. I'm Ken Rogers.